Regardless of the times in which we live, the journey of the human soul remains the most important consideration in the life of the individual and should be one of the great dynamics of the life of the collective. Until the human being senses again, until he realizes that his destiny is not fulfilled in the small cycle of immediate experiences with which he is familiar. The individual today has lost his kinship with a group of values which ancient man fully appreciated and accepted. He saw himself as part of a vast living organism. The ancient man, therefore, looking around and seeing the universe, saw it as a vast house, as a house in which there were many rooms. Man saw the universe as a vast structure of evolving life and saw himself moving through this structure. Where did man come from? Man came out of a universal state. He came from the everywhere into the here. The ancient man believed that in a remote period, men lived with the gods, that men were fashioned first in a strange heavenly state, and then he started forth on his journey. And as man descended into the great, great ring of Saturn, according to the ancients, he received the potential of abstract mind, the power to become prudent. He did not become approved. He merely gained the power to be. And as he descended beyond this into the sphere of, of Jupiter, another vestment was added over as a garment upon an undergarment. And man gained the potential power of being reasonable, the power to think things through, to philosophize, and to gain the actual attribute of judgment. Then he went still further down and he received another vestment. And this third vestment was bestowed by the spirit of Mars. And this was the vestment of courage. The individual gained the power to become brave. To stand under the struggle and stress of things. To bear pain. To have the courage to dare. Added to the wisdom to be silent. Which he had previously received. Then he went still further and another luminous vestment was imposed upon him. And he was surrounded with a halo of light. He gained for himself the power of vitality, the power of energy. Energy becomes necessary to courage. And his light came from the sun. And from the sun he passed on downward still further. And he received from the guardian of the gate of Venus, he gained the mysterious power of beauty. He gained the ability to love. The strange and wonderful ability to forget self in the service of the beloved. And then he went still further downward into the mystery of things. And he came to the orbit of Mercury. And here was given to him skill and cunning. And the ability to use his talents and to the fashion and to fabricate things. And he was also given quickness. Wit was bestowed, so that he might bear the rest with patience. And then he came down into the orbit of the moon, and here imagination was bestowed. And imagination was the power that was sometimes to break all the bounds and boundaries that held him, and to give him freedom and release into a larger life. And thus well covered with seven rings, one within another, until he was burdened and loaded and heavy. He was then, according to the Greeks, caused to fall downward into darkness, into the mystery of the sphere of generation, which is the earth. And here then he was born, born with the seven vestments within himself, hidden from all sight, contained within and behind this thing which we call the body, given to the soul by the stars, in order that the soul might find its way back home again. Little by little, these potentials and powers which he has close in upon him again. 
His prudence becomes over caution and finally fearfulness. His judgment becomes locked by crystallization into intolerance, into opinion, or perhaps is not well enough developed to give him the power to judge righteous judgment. His courage leads him to disaster. He becomes not brave but audacious, and in such allows his ambitions to pervert his principles. His energy he wastes in riotous living. We waste our energies and then sometime wish we had them. Imagination leads us into every fantasy and excess, into suspicion, into tyranny, despotism, into all kinds of terror in the night. So one by one, these powers of the soul, which should give us the full measure of realization, betray us and leave us victim. But the rescuing of this was by the long process of outgrowing conditioned existence. And to achieve this aim, the soul had to consciously ascend through the seven orbits of the stars from the dark threshold of the moon god up through the seven gates to the upper world from which he had come. The journey back upward is always man's eternal psychic entity leading him back by his dreams, his aspirations, and his affections to the great spheres from which he fell. To seek adventure, to seek things, and in gaining things, to lose self. But man, gaining all other things, has as a result lost pure consciousness, without which his journey to life cannot be perfected. To escape from the world, he must therefore escape from worldliness which had to either be overcome or man would be drawn back. Therefore he turned as the mystic turned. Instead of attempting to conquer the world, he attempted to conquer worldliness in himself, realizing that he was bound here by these very ambitions which he sought to satisfy or to gratify, consequently by becoming desireless by no longer responding to the allurements of the world, by no longer admitting the power of the world, that instead of dying out of a material state, he must die out of the materiality in himself. 